making plans for night you This boy is electric Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy related video. I've just finished recording my um, guessing, predicting video for how we got on in September and how we're going to get on in October for solar generation. So if you've missed that already, uh, go and have a look in uh, the, oh, what do you call it, uh, the list of videos that I produce and you should be able to find the one talking about estimates and predictions for September and October. Uh, but this video, no, it's about how did we get on in September. It is Thursday the 2nd of October today. It's time to update you on what we did solar-wise and energy-wise. And it's been a cracking month. I didn't expect this. Uh, it has been a really, really good month. A record solar month. In fact, there's some um, other interesting numbers to come across on the energy side as well as to how much we've been importing, how much we've been using, and what all of that looks like as a balance. So anyway, let's not waste more time yappering about it. Let's get on with how we got on in the month of September. Well, we had a surprisingly good solar month, 1,094 kilowatt hours generated. Looking at the breakdown here of all the different solar arrays we have, we have four different solar inverters, four different arrays. The first one we installed in 2019, 3.68 kilowatt inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof, south mounted, 465.8 kilowatt hours. But the other three that we've installed later, the decisions are made to install solar in the garden on the gable over the garage roof, all these different uh, solar arrays we've installed they now add up to more than the first one. So we've more than doubled our solar capacity and it really is making a huge, huge difference. Great decisions to install more solar. If you've already watched my September, October guessing solar um, video, then you'll know that September 2025 was a record for us. 466 kilowatt hours over on the right hand side is higher for our main solar array than we've experienced on any other September in previous years. And the 266 in green for the solar edge array is exactly the same. So we've had more solar this September than any other year. Uh, 2025 has just been really, really bright. I, I wonder what's going to be said about it and whether the, we're going to get more brightness you know is this global warming or is this just an exceptional month you know what is going on because it's getting hard in the uk to judge whether it's going to be dull and dreary and the seasons do seem to be changing more don't they you know we used to think of april as april showers and rainy days but is it now? Is April actually a really sunny month these days? I, I don't know. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments about whether you think the seasons really are changing. Something odd is going on for certain when you get Septembers like this that are exceptionally good. In addition to the solar, we imported from Octopus Energy, just cheap rates, 7 pence a kilowatt hour, almost 730 kilowatt hours. Including the standard charge, that's cost us £64.75. Exported energy, 1,265 kilowatt hours for a credit of £189.80. Thank you very much, Octopus Energy. Another £125 credit is much better than actually getting an energy bill. In summary then, 1,094 kilowatt hours generated, 730 kilowatt hours imported from the grid at cheap rates, just 7 pence a kilowatt hour, 1,824 kilowatt hours available. Of that, we exported 1,265, which means we consumed 559 kilowatt hours, in total a net credit of £125. The thing to note there that we've exported more than we generated. How did we do that? Well, we imported energy into our battery, charged up our battery overnight at 7 pence a kilowatt hour, then exported it, exported it for 15 pence a kilowatt hour. This is the battery chart, and it's showing that we only exported down to just above 40%. So so even exporting for that much extra credit, you know, another 200, 250 kilowatt hours a month, we're only dropping the battery capacity down to 40%. Our battery is 30, 32 kilowatt hours capacity. So plenty of capacity for our needs and some extra to export to the grid. In winter, though, it's going to change, isn't it? Because if we don't get any solar during the day, we're going to need those 30 kilowatt hours to run the house more comfortably. We won't have as much energy to export. So export from the batteries is going to start changing. 
Breakdown of energy consumption then, uh, 241 kilowatt hours zappy that's charging our electric cars. But also a couple of friends came over and uh, on each occasion we charged an extra 30 kilowatt hours into their cars. So our zappy charging has been a little bit higher this month. Second highest consumer of energy was the kitchen, so that's the washing machine and all the cooking appliances in the kitchen, uh, 64.18 kilowatt hours. The Eddy, that's heating our hot water, 58.75 kilowatt hours. Uh, Mixergy as well, we did some Mixergy charging, that was to do a cleanse on the tank, another 10 kilowatt hours on top, and uh, still 21 kilowatt hours of solar heating the hot water. TV, that was 20 kilowatt hours. That's pretty much the same every month. We watch a lot of television. The main induction hob, that's pretty standard as well. Another 16.58 kilowatt hours. And 13 kilowatt hours for the internet hubs, all the MyEnergy and Home Assistant hubs. They're all together uh, on the same connection. And the interesting one, Toshiba Air Conditioning. Yep, 13.2 kilowatt hours air conditioning. That's the first week of September was still hot so we're still air conditioning and until now first week of october we haven't turned the heating on yet so just 13 kilowatt hours of cooling is all we've had this month and lastly the lawnmower the yuka robot mowers just 1.47 kilowatt hours for the month so talking of cooling, uh, temperatures next. These are all the temperature sensors we have, and the pink one at the bottom of the chart is our loft, so it's pretty much close to outside temperature. And as you can see, at the end of September, temperatures have definitely dropped to 8, 9, 10 degrees overnight. Temperatures in the house as well, those have dropped. So instead of being 21 degrees uh, all of the time, sometimes they're dropping to 18, 19 degrees. It just hasn't gone past that point where we actually feel cold and turn the heating on. Going back to solar for a moment, uh, it's been interesting to look at the generation stats to see what the peak is during the day. So this is our 3.68 kilowatt inverter, and it's still peaking at 3.68 kilowatts. So we're still getting very good generation. This chart with the yellow line is showing the 2 kilowatt limit of our solar edge inverter. So again, we're reaching the limit of that inverter still. For less time, less instances, but we still are peaking well. So the angles of the sun haven't dropped down to uh, prevent these inverters from maxing out. And this chart showing all of our solar power coming in, the maximum peak power is still 9, 9.2, 9.4 kilowatts on the best of days at the moment. But that's all about to change, and this chart here from Solar Edge pretty much emphasizes that. Look at these September numbers over on the left, and the green one showing the high, the record for this September. But look at the drop to October. Most Octobers are a lot, lot less. So this October, we can expect lower peaks, lower generation, more rainy days. Yeah, autumn's really here. The mornings are getting dark. The evenings are getting dark. Everything's about to change. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed these videos and uh, let me know in the comments whether you really missed those detailed day-by-day -day charts or whether I should miss those out in the future. If you see what the numbers are, do you need to see the day-by-day? -day? Maybe we can keep these videos just a little bit shorter um, on not putting those in. But if you want them, if you need them for your analysis, let me know and I'll start adding them back in. Take care, see you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.